Hey, this is Aaron Rabinowitz for CreativeCow.net. A very popular request at the After Effects forum is how do I make the display seen on a slot machine or an odometer? What people are really asking is how they can create a series of images or numbers that can easily repeat themselves over and over and that are controllable. And along with the odometer, numbers that cycle properly. Also, a big part of the request is getting it to look 3D and somewhat cylindrical in shape. Boy, you folks want everything, don't you? Okay, let's see what we can do. There have been a lot of great posts on this, but I figured it's been asked so many times over the years that I try and wrap it up into a tutorial and you know, give it some of my own thoughts as well. I'll be focusing on an odometer, but you can use the techniques we discussed here for slot machines and a bunch of other stuff as well. So here we are in After Effects in a composition called Numbers. I've got a black solid layer I'm using for my background and some numbers that are perfectly spaced for my needs. Rather than bore you with creating this composition from scratch, I'll just quickly show you how I did it. First, I set up this composition with the dimensions 150 by 1500 pixels. Since there will be 10 numbers from 0 through 9, each number will occupy its own perfect square of space measuring 150 by 150 pixels. To make setting this up easier, I went into the preferences by choosing Edit, Preferences, and under the Grids and Guides section, I set it to show a grid line every 150 pixels with a subdivision of 1. As a result, based on my dimensions, I got 10 perfect squares because 1500 divided by 150 is 10, just what I needed. If you do this, you'll want to choose View, Show Grid, which as you can see adds green grid lines to the composition. These lines won't show up in a render, by the way. It's just there to help guide you. Next, I added the numbers 0 through 9 by using the Vertical Type tool. Once done, it was a simple matter of playing around in the Characters palette to get the size and spacing that I needed. I'm using a font you may not have, so I'm going to outline the text so that the project works for you. If you use a different font, then size and spacing for your numbers will vary. So that brings us up to date. Let's get cracking. First, let's create a new composition by choosing Composition new composition and let's name it all numbers and then give it the dimensions 640 by 1500 obviously the dimensions will vary based on your project but this is what I'm using I'm going to keep this at 10 seconds in length and again that's on a project by project basis and then I'll click OK to confirm next I'm going to turn off my grid here by choosing view hide grid Next, let's take our numbers composition, that's the composition we were just looking at a moment ago, and then nest it into this new composition. Then move it over to near the right edge of the composition. Give it a little space on the side though. Next, select the numbers precomp, and then let's duplicate it by hitting Control D, or if you're on a Macintosh, Command D, and then slide the duplicate over to the left. Leave a little space between the two of them, but just a little. I'm going to jump ahead in time to where I've already duplicated the numbers two more times and everything is positioned as I'd like it. Next, let's add in a new solid by choosing Layer, New, Solid. And from the color chooser, choose White. And make sure the solid is the same size as our composition. Click OK to confirm the creation of a new white solid. Now, just place the solid at the bottom of the stack order so that it's being used as a background. OK, now let's get our numbers to animate. Select the first numbers precomp, that's the one all the way to the right, and choose Effect, Distort, Offset. Now this effect can be used to offset the position of a layer by panning it on the X or Y axis. But in addition to just panning it, it repeats it. So as something goes off the edge of the screen, it reappears on the opposite side of the screen. By that, I mean that as it passes the edge of the screen, it will appear to be on both sides of the screen at once. You probably recognize this effect from Photoshop, which has the same exact effect found under Filter, Other, Offset. With the only difference being that in After Effects, the offset is animatable. Now, a really nice application of this effect is if your footage occupies the entire screen, when you offset up or down, you can create a TV roll effect. You know that annoying thing that happens when your TV is on the fritz? Or you can use it to create looping text, such as you might see on lower thirds on the news. This makes it ideal for what we need to do, which is to repeat these numbers over and over as they animate going up in value. So with our number layer selected, let's take a look in our effects panel and see what we need to do to make that happen. 
Now, you'll notice that our shift center to value seems odd. Rather than being set to 0 on the x and 0 on the y, it's set to 75 on the x and 750 on the y. In case you're wondering why that is, well, it's simple. Since our numbers layer has the dimensions 150 by 1500, that means that dead center is going to be x equals 75 and y equals 750. If you scrub the y value up or down, our center is shifting, but the visual result is that the numbers loop over and over seamlessly. At this point, you can probably see how you might use this for a slot machine. Just loop a similar composition with images instead of numbers until you want it to stop. Make sense? All right, I'm not really sure why I asked that question. It's not like you can answer back, but uh, I'm going to assume that you said yes, and we'll move on. On the first frame of our timeline, in the effects panel, let's set a shift center to keyframe with its default value of x equals 75 and y equals 750. Then move down to the last frame of the timeline and set it to negative 750. If you scrub through time, you can see that our numbers do one seamless loop over the course of the animation. Now right now, as this project stands, we have to animate the offset of each of these layers separately. And not just that. For this to be an accurate depiction of an odometer, each layer's offset has to animate at one-tenth the speed of the layer to its right. So if the numbers in our ones column here shifted 10,000 pixels over the animation, our tens column would only shift 1,000 pixels. Furthermore, our hundreds column would only shift 100 pixels and our thousands column would shift only 10 pixels. This is easy enough to calculate when you're working with nice round numbers like 10,000 or 100, but if you're not, doing the math can be what we in the business of animation call a whopping pain in the big old arse. So what we need to do is find a way to automate this, and we'll cover that in part two of this tutorial. In the meantime, for a very basic odometer, you can mask out everything but the area right below the top here where the numbers are all zero at the beginning, and then animate the cycling of the numbers manually. Don't forget, you can get the files for this and other podcasts at www.creativecow.net forward slash AEPodcast. Once again, this is Aaron Rabinowitz for creativecow.net.